Thank you for joining me today. I am so honored to be a speaker at BW NICE's annual conference among a group of such talented and amazing women. I'm Nadia Krejci of Nourish by Nadia. I'm a holistic nutritionist in Flemington, New Jersey. I also own a plant-based meal delivery service that I launched um, in 2020 with a line of immune boosting products as well, like elderberry syrup. For those who don't know me, I wasn't always a health advocate. Um, I graduated from Rutgers and ate the typical college diet of fat sandwiches and soda. I then worked in finance for about 10 years. And during this time, I also had a cake business on the side. The cakes were delicious and beautiful, but were nowhere near healthy. However, throughout my 20s, I started to become interested in nutrition. I began drinking green smoothies, worked out consistently, and was learning on my own, really, in terms of nutrition. I eventually enrolled in a nutrition program, left my finance job, and ended my cake business. And in 2015, I started my own practice um, nutrition practice. Today, I'm excited to be here to discuss how we can view food as medicine and what foods to incorporate in our lifestyle. If you want more energy to lose weight, to prevent disease, I will help you make changes today. This year, it's time to change your mindset and focus on foods that will help you really take back control of your health. Um, I know in the past year, things have been tough for everyone in terms of worrying about our health, anxiety, living through a pandemic. Um, plus, many of us are working from home, kids are remote learning, and just the list goes on. It's just been a very stressful year um, living through this pandemic. Um, our routine, routines are really just way off at this point. Um, and how many of you have put yourself second or third to everything and everyone else this past year? Maybe your fitness routine has been inconsistent or you've had one too many cakes or the newest trend, hot chocolate bombs, um, which by the way, look beautiful. I haven't had one yet, um, but they look amazing. Um, the first thing I want to say is don't feel guilty. 2020 was not an easy year, but be proud of yourself for doing the best you could in such a tough situation. And now we can finally put 2020 behind us. We're in January, 2021. And I know that a lot of people will, you know, have new resolutions. Um, I prefer to call them goals um, because resolutions tend to not work for a lot of people. So we're gonna today set a few simple goals um, that we'll discuss later. Um, but in the meantime, let's discuss um, how food can be your best medicine. Now, like I said, it's 2021, it's a new year. Um, it's really time to shift your mindset when it comes to food. You may have heard the saying before, you are what you eat. A healthy diet will help you maintain a healthier lifestyle and prevent disease, and in some cases, even reverse disease. While obviously nothing in life is absolute, anything can happen to anyone no matter you know, and some people, no matter what they do, there could be other factors, environmental, genetics, but food is something that's in our control. We can control what we consume on a daily basis. Today, I want to help you focus on what you're putting into your body. If let's say day after day, you're eating fast food, fried food, um, a lot of sugar, a lot of salty foods, what do you think that that's doing to the inside of your body. So right now you may not feel anything, um, you know, maybe it hasn't had any effect on you, but in the long run for many people, you will start seeing um, health, you know, health concerns that may come up um, and you wanna try to prevent that. And if you're, let's say that you're already, you already have certain health conditions, there are ways to, with food, um, try to at least alleviate some of your symptoms. Um, if you've been eating this way for decades, that's okay too. It's really never too late to make changes. Your body is amazing in the way it can heal itself. Your job is to really treat it the way it deserves to be treated. Now, I want to share a personal story about my own journey this past year. Um, I had surgery earlier in January, 2020 
I wanted to recover quickly using the tools that I knew would help. Um, you know, I've been studying nutrition now. I'm a nutritionist. I've been a nutritionist for about five years. Um, and I've also just been on my own studying for several years. So I knew many of the things that would help me in recovering quicker or at least less, less painfully. So um, one of the things that I had predicted was that the hospital food provided would be far from nutritious. Um, I saw this from my own experience um, in my family. Um, I saw that the food that they were providing to, um, to people in my family um, over time, it was just not the right thing. Um, for example, my dad is diabetic. He had pneumonia a couple of years ago and they were giving him sugary foods, um, just all the things that he shouldn't be eating. So I knew what to expect going into the hospital back in January. Um, so what I did was I actually ended up ahead of time buying foods like um, vegetable broth, anti-inflammatory juices that included ginger and turmeric, herbal teas. Um, I bought ingredients for smoothies that my husband could prepare and bring to me. I knew I wouldn't really have much of an appetite post-surgery, but for when I could eat, um, I wanted to load my body with nutrients in easy to consume forms. Um, and it did turn out that I really didn't have that much um, you know, that much of an appetite, but at least I knew that whatever I did end up eating, whether it was drinking vegetable broth or having a little bit of my juices, um, at least I knew that that was nutritious and I was actually really feeding my body what it needed at that time. And in terms of the hospital food, um, I was absolutely right in my assumption. You, so guess what they brought me? Um, soda, chips, Jello, uh, basically everything a person shouldn't have when they're trying to recover. Um, high salt, high sugar foods devoid of any real nutrients at all. Of course, um, I don't remember this much, but apparently I kept refusing all of it. Um, and I'm sure I said something too to them. And that food just kept going back, but luckily I was prepared. Now, these were foods uh, that the hospital was providing that would increase inflammation in a body that was already inflamed and swollen from surgery. So, I mean, it really, it makes no sense, but, you know, I knew what to expect. So I was prepared during my recovery process over the, over the next several weeks, I continued to feed my body with nutrient dense foods. And I also started to add in some light walking as well, um, just to kind of get my body moving um, and, um, and trying to get back to normal, really. I attribute my quick recovery to my lifestyle before and after my surgery. So because I was already eating well before my surgery um, and then post-surgery, I was also eating well and starting to incorporate some movement um, as well with the walking, I definitely recovered rather quickly um, from my surgery. Now, the reason I share this, um, I want to show you how important it is to really eat the right foods. I'm not saying that you shouldn't indulge sometimes, but you should be eating nutritious foods, I would say most of the time. And I'll get into some of my uh, favorite foods and recommendations to include in your lifestyle a little later. I quote some um, a quote that some attribute to Hippocrates is, let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. Now that quote is disputed and some say he didn't actually say that, but regardless, um, there is a lot of truth in that quote. If you view food as something that can make you feel better, give you energy, help or prevent a health condition and help you lose weight, your mindset will actually slowly change over time. You'll want to consume those foods because they you'll see a difference. They'll you'll feel better. Um, you might, you know, you're you might see changes in your in your lab work um, and all these different things you'll see over time. Um, you'll want to just you will actually want to continue that lifestyle and trying to incorporate as many healthy foods into your into your day as possible. 
you actually become a lot more conscious of what you're putting in your body. Um, there are definitely some foods that I recommend that everyone should eat. And then depending on your situation and health, you might need more specific foods. Um, let's say that you have some kind of condition or um, in my case, when I was recovering from surgery, I wanted to add extra anti-inflammatory foods like, um, like ginger and turmeric, for example. Um, now I wanna talk about the importance of fiber. So fiber is in all plant foods. Um, we should be aiming to get at least 25 to 40 grams of fiber a day, um, yet most adults only get 15 grams. Um, what happens is the tendency tends to be focused, like we, we tend to focus on protein um, a lot and carbs or the lack of carbs and people are not really emphasizing how important fiber is in our diets. There are two types of fiber, and it's really important to get a variety of both in our diets. There's soluble and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber is fiber that dissolves easily and, for example, um, can help lower, lower our cholesterol. Soluble fiber includes oats, beans, and carrots. Um, Insoluble fiber is food that basically moves things along in our digestive system and bodies. Insoluble fibers include whole grains, nuts, and cauliflower. So why is fiber so important? It helps us regulate our digestive systems, keeps us full for longer, can help with weight loss, and lowers blood sugar levels. Fiber can actually help slow down the body's absorption of sugar, helping to prevent blood sugar spikes after meals. Um, high fiber foods help a person feel full for longer and may actually help people stick to a diet. In every meal, I want you to incorporate at least one food that has fiber in it. Now, all plant foods have fiber, including beans, lentils, vegetables, fruit, greens, nuts, and whole grains. When they say eat the rainbow, that's exactly what I want you to, to do. Um, a few ideas to add more fiber in your diet include eating raw vegetables with hummus um, or salsa, add lentils or beans to your salad. Um, you could also, you know, add other types of legumes, legumes if you like, um, you know, there's so many different types. You could add black beans, soybeans. Um, there's so many different types of lentils. Um, there's pinto beans, kidney beans. So there's so many options. You can change it up on a weekly basis if you want. Um, and then adding ground flax seed or chia seeds, you could add them to your smoothies. You could add them to, um, to your salads. There's just so many ways. Um, you can also make energy bites. Like energy bites are really fun to make. You can make them with your kids. Um, and that's a great way to add more fiber in your diet as well as um, your family's diet as, um, as well. And, it's, and they're delicious. Um, all you need, for example, one of my favorite, um, energy bite recipes is basically taking oats, dates, um, you know, throw in maybe some dried raisins um, or some type of dried fruit, um, add some nut butter like peanut butter or almond butter and really just, you know, put it all together. Um, and then there are other ways to do that too. You could just um, make a, make balls out of it or you can put it into your food processor if you like that type of texture. So those are just a couple of ideas. Um, you can also add vegetables and greens to your pasta, sauces, and soups. So you don't really notice that, um, but it's being incorporated into your, you know, into your meals. Um, you can even puree it too. So if you want to kind of like sneak it in, um, you can puree some of your, your vegetables or greens and then add it into, you know, whatever you're eating or cooking. Um, so those are just a few ideas um, to try to incorporate more fiber into your diet because it really is so important um, on a daily basis. So we've discussed changing our mindset about food and thinking of food as medicine, right? Um, I've also discussed fiber and how important adding um, plant foods into your diet is. But what specific foods should we be eating on a daily basis to boost our immune system and to su uh, su really support and optimize our health? The function of an immune system is to prevent or limit infections, toxins, irritants, and even reduce excessive mucus production. 
It's our body's defense system, really. We have a complex array of T cells, B cells, antibodies, and other things that fight off and remove potential dangers to optimize our health. There are many factors, including stress, the environment, and hormones that affect our immune system. However, the biggest factor to maintain an effective immune system is eating a nutrient-dense diet with a variety of fruit, vegetables, greens, whole grains, nuts, seeds, and herbs, many of the things that I've already discussed. Um, now, there are certain foods that I recommend including in your diet as often as possible, if not every day, at least a few times a week. Um, so one of the things that I love to incorporate are berries. Um, now there are so many types of berries. There's blackberries, blueberries, um, wild blueberries, which actually have a lot more antioxidants than um, than you know regular blueberries. Wild blueberries you can actually find in the frozen section, so it's really convenient. Um, there's also raspberry. Raspberries are also um, really delicious too. Um, berries have powerful immune boosting and anti-cancer properties. They have been shown to actually be beneficial for heart health as well as slowing age-related mental decline. Um, so it's really important to try to add them into your diet. Um, they also are low in sugar. So if you have, um, if you're diabetic or you're watching your glucose levels, berries are a good option for you. Um, and I would recommend trying to eat maybe a half cup a day if possible. Um, and some ways you can try to add them into your diet include, um, you know, adding it to your yogurt or adding it to your smoothie or just having it as is. They're so delicious. Um, you know, there's so many different kinds and they're really delicious that you could just eat them as a snack or after dinner. Um, mushrooms are another um, food that I strongly recommend that you include in your diet, um, eat a variety. So I know that in, let's say you go to um, a supermarket, they'll have a few different kinds, like they'll have, they always have the baby Bellas, Portobellas. Um, but now I'm actually starting to see that they are carrying other types of mushrooms as well, like shiitake. And um, uh, there's a few others too that I've seen uh, recently, um, which is great. Um, a clinical study actually found that eating shiitake mushrooms, um, which I mentioned are, I have started seeing it in, in regular supermarkets, um, they actually improve your immunity. So it's a good idea to try to incorporate them into your, um, into your lifestyle um, as often as possible. Um, Beta-glucans are actually sugars found in the cell walls of mushrooms, um, among other plants too. They are, they are in other plants, but that is actually what helps boost our immune system. So eating mushrooms may actually also help prevent respiratory infections, um, according to a 2012 study that was published in Nutrition. So, um, you know, there's there's other ways to incorporate them. Um, I've actually found at some of the supermarkets like ShopRite, I've found frozen shiitake mushrooms that are already sliced. So it makes it super easy. Um, and I try to keep those in, you know, if I don't have fresh, I try to keep that in the freezer because that's a really great way to, um, to just throw it into, I don't know, for example, soups or stir fries. Um, earlier today, I, um, I just sauteed some mushrooms and I, and I ate that along with whatever else I was eating. Um, there's also other things as well out there like mushroom powders. So um, there are brands out there that make, um, that basically make like organic mushroom powders that you can find. Um, you can make a tea out of it, a latte out of it. And it's another way to add mushrooms into your diet and also give you a boost of energy as well. Um, so that, that's another thing that you can definitely do. Um, the other thing that I love and I always recommend are greens. So there are so many different types of, of greens, um, like romaine lettuce, um, kale, spinach, shard, uh, dandelion greens. Um, I mean, even in terms of kale, there's so many different kinds of kale. So try to add that those into your diet as well, as often as possible. Um, 
they are actually high in um, many vitamins such as vitamin C, vitamin K and folate. And these are all good immune system boosters. Um, in some ways I recommend adding them like, you know, just as I said, for mushrooms, um, you could add them into your soups. You could, you could do stir fries um, into your pastas, lasagnas. There's, um, you know, you could do smoothies. Um, you can also juice it. Um, of course, like I mentioned about fiber earlier, um, when you're juicing something, it actually removes the fiber. So usually I, I tend to um, usually recommend more so smoothies because you're getting everything from that, let's say, you know, from that kale, you're getting all of it. You're getting the fiber and all the different vitamins that are in it. Um, but I do highly recommend adding as many greens as possible on a daily basis. Um, the other thing I, I really recommend, um, like I mentioned before, are beans and legumes. So beans are an excellent source of protein. They play an important role in building cells, including those of your immune system. Um, you know, I'm talking a lot about the immune system, but it goes hand in hand with really trying to look at food as your medicine. Um, it's, it's just, it's so important, um, to how you feel on a daily basis and just for your long-term health as well. Um, nuts and seeds are also really important. They have strong anti-inflammatory properties. Um, inflammation, like I mentioned before, I was talking about inflammation and you know post-surgery. Inflammation is actually your body's way of defending itself from injury, bacteria, and other potentially harmful pathogens. Um, some of my favorites, uh, of nuts and seeds include walnuts, almonds, um, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. You can make um, nut butters. You can buy nut butters too. Um, let's say that you're, you know, a lot of people are allergic to nuts. You can actually buy pumpkin seed butter or sunflower seed butter. And you can also make it yourself too. It's actually pretty simple. If you have a food processor, you can actually make your own nut butters. Um, you know, I'll be honest, I don't do that too often, but it is something that you can do. Um, and, um, and then, you know, and just keep it in the fridge and you can make different variations of anti-inflammatory foods and high nutrient foods. So for example, you can make an almond butter. Um, you throw the almonds into your food processor um, until it gets, basically you, you basically let it, um, let it process until it becomes creamy. Um, but you could also add some cinnamon to it. Um, you could add cloves, which I'm going to discuss later and, and, you know, and, and really make it your own. I mean, that's something that you can't buy in stores. So I would definitely recommend playing around with that. Um, but, uh, ways that other ways that you can add, um, these nuts and seeds into your diet include adding it to your salads. Um, I actually make a vegan cheese, um, with, uh, with, um, with almonds or, um, with cashews. So that's another way to incorporate more, um, more nuts into your diet. Whole grains are also very important, like uh, oats and quinoa, for example, brown rice. Whole grains are actually attributed to improving the body's ability to ward off infection. Um, so you definitely want to try to incorporate whole grains as much as possible. Now, since we're in the middle of a pandemic, um, I also wanted to mention a few vitamins to include more of, um, and that includes high vitamin C foods. Um, so clinical trials have actually found that vitamin C shortens the frequency, duration, and severity of the common cold and the incidence of pneumonia. So vitamin C can actually help regenerate cells and support the immune system. So there are foods out there um, that you can incorporate as much as possible. And this will actually, um, so this will, these foods will be high in vitamin C, but also high, obviously, because they're a plant food. Um, like I mentioned, all plant foods have fiber. So they're going to be high in fiber. They're, they'll boost your immune system. Um, so some of those foods include broccoli, citrus, like lemons and oranges, kale, kiwi, papaya, strawberries. So these are, you know, just some of the foods that you can try to incorporate into your diet. Um, one of the things that I like to do every morning is I'll drink lemon water. So um, it gives me kind of like a boost of uh, vitamin C 
first thing in the morning. And it's really great for digestion as well. So that's something that I do. And, and one trick that I actually have for lemon water is um, I'll squeeze several lemons and put them into ice cube trays. And um, so that every morning I don't have to necessarily cut a lemon, you know, cut a lemon and squeeze it. I have um, lemon ice cubes that I can just throw into some warm water. So that actually works out really well. So that's just a little trick that I do. Um, and then in terms of like the other foods that I mentioned, like broccoli, um, it's a good idea for some of these foods to add them in both their raw form and their um, cooked form. So, you know, you can steam some broccoli, um, but you can also have it raw with, um, let's say, you know, you want it with some hummus. So you can squeeze some lemon juice on it to really, you know, to really increase that vitamin C. So there's, there's different ways that you can do that. Um, now, post-surgery, my body was, like I mentioned, in a state of inflammation. So I really wanted to heal by eating specific foods. Um, inflammation refers to your body's process of fighting against things that harm it. Um, when something damages your cells, your body releases chemicals that end up triggering a response from your immune system. So some herbs and spices for inflammation. Um, and that's why I wanted to mention inflammation again, because there are you know, herbs and spices that will help um, with both inflammation and detox. So ginger is one of them. Um, it's a good idea. You can eat this raw. Um, you could add it to, for example, cauliflower rice, which uh, cauliflower is high in vitamin C. So incorporating that with some ginger um, is a great idea. And it's also great for digestion too, ginger. So, um, you know, and you can also you know, just add it to anything that you're eating. If you're, you, you could add it, if, if you like, if you like to eat ginger raw, you could do that. You could also add it to your lemon water too, if you want to do that, or you can add it to your herbal teas, you know, just like a, a small sliver of it. Um, so that, that's just a couple of ways. Um, and then, you know, slice it up, um, maybe have some minced ginger and add it to your foods. Like if you have, if you have like sauteed vegetables, for example, you can add some ginger to it for that extra inflammatory boost, uh, anti-inflammatory boost. Um, turmeric is another food as well. That's very anti-inflammatory. Um, you know, a lot of people consume that on a regular basis. It also actually um, helps with headaches. Um, I know that, some, you know, once in a while I'll get a headache and I'll take some turmeric and I feel better. So um, it actually works um, as, you know, for many people as a painkiller as well. Um, so, uh, so, you know, that's something too, and you can add it to, um, you can do, you can eat it raw um, in, you know, just the same way as ginger. Um, you can also have it in powder form. And that's actually, the powder form is a lot more common um, than, um, you know, the, the turmeric root. So that's another thing that you can do too, is just adding a little bit of turmeric powder. Um, I also make energy bites too, that have a little bit of turmeric powder and lemon juice in it. So you're getting um, that that double dose of anti-inflammatory and, um, you know, and then just adding some oats to it or something like that. So there's, there's just so many different possibilities, things that you can experiment with to make, um, all of this fun. Um, and I'll discuss some other ways, uh, later on, like how, how you can really do that. Um, parsley is another, another food, um, that is high in vitamin C. Um, so that's another thing that you can add, to stir fries, you can add it to, um, you know, just like instead of using a dried, you know, let's say dried parsley, you can use fresh parsley. Um, same thing with cilantro, you can eat it raw, you can juice it, you can add it to meals, you can add it to your smoothies. Um, I've often done that. So there's a lot of different ways to do that as well. Um, and, and just incorporating it into your into your foods, you can also add it to both parsley and cilantro, you could add them to, um, let's say that you're making veggie burgers, you can add it to that. So um, there's a lot of different ways and they're really important for both um, inflammation as well as detox. Cloves are another one. Um, cloves are high in vitamin C. Um, they can actually be made in a tea. Um, you could just put a couple of cloves, add it to your tea, your herbal tea. Um, and in my business, actually, I make elderberry syrup and I add cloves just for that extra, extra boost. Um, 
so they're just a really great, I would say un, almost an underrated um, food that people kind of forget about. So that's something that I would definitely try to recommend um, adding in if you can. Um, and it's just a dried, you know, I don't have any with me right now, but they're just like dried little, um, little, uh, I guess, you know, I don't know what they're, I, I wish I had it with me so I could show you, but they're like about this small and they're dried. So you can just keep it in your pantry for months. Um, rosemary is another one and rosemary you can have either in its dried form or you can also buy uh, fresh rosemary, especially around this time of year. I think it's more, uh, you can find it more. Um, I know that around Thanksgiving, you could also find rosemary. Um, rosemary is great because it has anti-inflammatory properties. Um, it's high in antioxidants and may even help with improving your mood and memory. Um, and you can make a tea out of it, um, or you could add rosemary to like a saute or, um, or to a meal. Um, some other ideas include overnight oats. Um, you can add berries, nuts, and seeds uh, to your oatmeal. Um, you can make smoothies with greens, parsley, berries, and apple. Um, you could do stir fry with mushrooms, bell peppers, which by the way, bell peppers are high in vitamin C, uh, greens, beans. Um, you can kind of basically make a stir fry with all those. So stir fry with mushrooms, bell peppers, uh, greens. You can add some black beans to it and then eat that with, let's say some quinoa on the side with some, with some raw cilantro on top. Um, and as you get used to kind of eating this way, um, your taste buds will adjust and you'll actually really crave that. Uh, some foods to avoid and limit due to inflammation and suppressing our immune system include processed foods. Um, if you're, if you're, let's say you're in the grocery store and you're looking for certain products, if you see a long list of ingredients in it that you don't recognize, just put it back on the shelf. It's probably not something that you want to consume. Um, you know, once in a while it's okay, but as a treat, but you definitely want to try to avoid processed foods. Um, sugar is another one too. Sugar definitely suppresses our immune system and it's not something that you should have on a regular basis, um, as well as dairy. And we'll, I'll go over some dairy uh, substitutes later on because I think that that's often one that's really hard for people. Um, to adjust to. And then fried food, of course. Um, I think a lot of us know that fried food on a regular basis isn't really that great for us. Um, so some food swaps I wanted to kind of go over as well. Um, so when transitioning to a fiber rich plant forward diet, I suggest experimenting with different products and foods to see what you really like. Make small changes. So I always recommend making small incremental changes so you don't feel overwhelmed. If you just try to overnight, um, you know, um, make all these changes, it's not going to be sustainable. So some of the swaps that I recommend um, include, include choosing whole grain bread instead of white bread, swapping out your white pasta for other alternatives like chickpea pasta, quinoa pasta, uh, quinoa pasta or brown rice, rice pasta instead of dairy. Um, like I mentioned before, instead of dairy, switch to plant milks and yogurts, find ones that you like. Um, there are so many different brands out there uh, and just watch them though. Make sure you read the ingredients because a lot of them do end up for some reason, end up um, including sugar. So go for the unsweetened kind. Um, but there's soy milk, almond milk, coconut yogurt, there are just so many options these these days. So really just find one that you like and remember, read your label so that you're not, you know, just because it's um, a plant milk or plant-based milk doesn't mean it's necessarily healthy. You still have to read the ingredients. Um, and then switch to vegetable broth instead of a meat-based broth. For mashed potatoes, and this is a trick that I use, um, is so the water that you use uh, to boil, boil, boil the potatoes use that water, save that water, and then use that to make your mashed potatoes creamy. So use that instead of butter. And you can also add some plant milk to make it extra creamy. So that's just a trick that once you try it, it actually works. Um, and then instead of soda, drink sparkling or seltzer water, try kombucha or coconut water. If sharing dips such as, um, let's say that you're, you know, you're, you're having dips such as hummus or guacamole, 
um, skip the chips and bread and, and, um, have some veggies with it. Some sliced veggies like cucumbers or carrots or, or broccoli instead, um, instead of white sugar, um, you know, try to try to switch to a different type of sugar, like date sugar or coconut sugar. Of course you should try to limit that as well. But it, if you are going to have, um, sugar once in a while, those are more, those are natural options. Um, now to create your, um, health and nutrition goals for 2021. I'm going to help you. So you're going to get some homework today, um, that you can work on either after, you know, after this conference or, you know, later today or this week, but I do want you to really think about this. Um, and if you have a piece of paper or want to maybe jot it down right now, real quick, you you are going to think of three nutrition objectives or goals for 2021. Now keep it simple. Um, as I said earlier, make small incremental changes. These are not resolutions. These are small goals and take, just take it one day at a time and be kind to yourself. So to help you, here are a few examples you can work on. Um, find a non-dairy creamer that you love, add a salad to your dinner. So let's say that you're eating something, add a, add a small side salad to it. Um, with it, make a smoothie three times a week, uh, reduce your fried food consumption, eat one apple a day with almond butter, drink water or green tea instead of, um, let's say soda or some kind of juice with, um, with a lot of sugar in it, uh, add spinach and other veggies to your lasagna. And then try one new plant-based recipe a week. So for example, some healthy bloggers include Minimalist Baker, uh, Vegan 8, Detoxinista. They have a lot of great ways to try to incorporate more veggies into your diet. And as you make healthier choices, keep a positive mindset. Focus on what you can eat, not on what you can't eat. Initially, you may crave certain foods, but get you'll get past these cravings. Your body will get used to it, and you'll no longer want those foods anymore. You'll feel so great that you just won't want them, and the cravings will actually subside. Um, and your taste buds as well quickly adjust. Um, let's say that you you've adjusted your salt intake. If you have something salty, it's actually going to taste really salty and may not taste good to you anymore. So your, your body adjusts to these, to these things. And above all, have fun this year with new foods and experience. This is a new year with new beginnings. I really want you to live healthier for both you and your family and friends. Um, I hope, really hope you found my information helpful today. I know it was a lot of information and I'm always here. If you have any questions, um, uh, feel free to reach out to me at, at nourishbynadia.com. You can email me at Nadia at nourishbynadia.com or follow me on Instagram or Facebook at nourishbynadia. Um, thank you for everything. And I really hope everyone enjoys the rest of today's conference. Can't wait to see you all in person, hopefully sometime soon this year. Have a great day. Bye.